What is a vector database? With all the database types out there, relational database, graph, and document database, do we really need another one? Let's dive into everything we need to know about vector databases and how they're changing the world of AI. To appreciate the purpose of vector databases, let us first look into the concept of vectors. In large language models, a vector is a list of numbers that represent a piece of information, specifically a segment of text. These numbers are computed to capture the semantic meaning of the text. This means that similar words or concepts will have vectors that are close together in a multidimensional space. Vectors are created based on a specialized machine learning model called embedding models. These models are trained on massive amount of text data to learn the relationship between words and concepts, allowing them to generate meaningful numerical representation. There are many embedding models. This includes commercial models like GPT-4, Cloud from Anthropic, Gemini from Google, and even open source models like Mistral, Llama, and Grok. These models are trained with different sources of data in different sizes, so the behaviors and capabilities of each model vary depending on the training data. Traditional databases aren't designed to handle vector data. Vector databases are specifically built for storing and retrieving vectors. More importantly, they can calculate the distance between vectors incredibly fast. Do you see the value of vector databases now? Vector databases plays an important role in AI because information used by LLMs are represented in vectors, and vector databases are highly efficient in processing vector data. Now, several production-ready vector databases are available, each with its strengths and weaknesses. Let's assess them based on factors like licensing, community and corporate support, ease of integration, and performance. Pinecone is one of the most popular vector databases. If you are building a solution that is accessible on the cloud and can work on a cloud-hosted environment, then Pinecone is a good choice. The company has raised over $100 million in funding and they have strong community support because there's lots of tutorials and examples using Pinecone online. However, if you need a solution that requires on-premise installation, then you need to evaluate alternatives, including Milvus, Qdrant, and Chroma. These databases are open source and can be installed on-premise. Both Milvus and Qdrant are good choice for LLMs, but Milvus requires an extra step by explicitly creating indexes. Chroma, on the other hand, is designed more for images. All of them provide managed servers so you can benefit from hosting both on the cloud and on-premise. Fice, on the other hand, is a super fast vector search library. It can process vector search in memory which runs very fast. However, Fice does not persist the data in a permanent storage, so there are several steps needed to bring Fice for production use. Performance and accuracy are also two important factors to consider. Now, there are a handful of benchmarks available out there, but many of them are published by the developers themselves, so everyone is claiming to be the fastest. I would suggest to test the performance based on use case and actual data instead. In terms of supported algorithms, here is a table showing the comparison among the different vector databases. Cosine similarity and Euclidean distance stand out as the most commonly supported algorithm. Cosine similarity is good when searching for semantic similarity because it prioritizes the angles of the vectors and not their magnitude. So two documents with different word count but the same overall meaning will have similar cosine values. Euclidean distance, on the other hand, focuses on the magnitudes, so it works better on images. That product is computationally efficient, making it ideal for very large similarity calculations. It also considers both direction and magnitude of the vector. At the end of the day, you may want to experiment with the different algorithms to find the most appropriate metric depending on your use case. And that's a wrap for this episode of Artificially Intelligent.